Okay, welcome back to another episode. The process this time we're going over brush tips, Photoshop brushes. And so I'm going over one of the key few brushes that I like to use and I can send this uh, brush pack to you so look for the link below. And this is my first uh, brush tip that I like to use the most which is a drawing tool. Now this brush that I have is it's pretty controllable it's almost like drawing with a pen and all the brushes that I like to use in Photoshop are mainly uh, stuff that kind of mimic real life materials. Um, the second brush that I like to use is more of this oval brush. Now, now if you notice the oval brush has some tooth and grain to it. You can see the texture as I'm putting down the strokes. And another thing that it also has is this really great sense of um, of the uh, dry brush, this sense of pickup. You know, so you can see the overall shape is a is a uh, you know like an oval an oval footprint for the brush, and it's it's kind of mimicking an actual oil oil paint brush tips. You know, um, so that's something that I'd really like to go over, and that's a, a really comfortable painting tool, the oval brush. Now. A third brush tip that I like to also use is this more painterly brush tip. Now look at that. Look at look at the same uh, organic tip, like like footprint that it has, but it also has the characteristics of a really nice dry brush. So we have the organic shape and the dry brush kind of happening at the at the end of it over there. Okay. So what's nice about dry brush? It's like it's pressure sensitive. Right, and it is something that allows for there to be a little bit lighter application as we're pressing it just a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. And the pressure sensitivity is in the brush settings here. Okay, and you can see it as I'm clicking through these uh, dynamics. One of the things that's important to notice, you go to shape dynamics, it's on pen pressure, right? Pen pressure, that's gonna allow it to have a little bit of different characteristics when you're applying different types of uh, pressure. Now one thing to also notice is when you're doing retaining the shape versus just doing a pen pressure, if you turn that off, you're gonna get different tapering to the brush as well. So that's also something interesting to keep in mind. Now number four, there are going to be, you know, in painting, most of the case there's two main types of edges there's either a hard edge or a soft edge so number one is our drawing tool number two and three are our harder edged brushes and now we're going to go into soft edges all right soft brushes and soft brushes are super important because in in the painting process we do have the necessity to play around with the contrast of edges hard edges versus soft edges so for number four, it's like an airbrush. You can see that there's a very, very soft edge and gradation. And also, I'm using something that's a, a bit important where, you know, the flow, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm doing with the flow and the opacity in just a second. Here's another soft brush, but with a little bit of texture and grain to it. Kind of like what we were talking about with brushes two and three. But on this one, there's a organic, grainy sensibility here right now this is pretty nice to do when you want to uh, showcase something with a lot of atmosphere and a lot of dirt or dust in the air things like that things that have a little bit more uh, grain to it the softer airbrush it's very very smooth so you can maybe think about one brush could do fog and the other one could do like dusty air all right now these become the one, two, three, four main or five main brushes that I like to use um, from drawing to getting into the painting. All right, so let's let's use these in application. Let's go all the way through each brush and see how they work in application. So over here, you're going to see me. I'm just starting off a sketch, a very generic sort of rock study uh, landscape that I can just show how I like to use the brushes. Um, this isn't. This isn't anything fancy, but it's just, again, an exercise, right? So whenever you guys are doing exercises, please try to pick, at least in the beginning, a subject matter that's not too daunting and not too, you know, 
uh, uh, strenuous on the design sense because we want to just understand things. We just want to practice the techniques. And I'm also uh, putting in some darker accents and the three dots, what these dark accents do are it connects the scene. You know how three dots make sort of like this movement in space. So that's kind of what I was illustrating over there. And as I'm just drawing a little bit more complex shapes, the pen tool, you know, brush number one, is a great uh, it's a really good tool because it just feels like a pen you know it's something that we're very very familiar with so hopefully we don't have a hard time translating that type of technique in Photoshop you know it, it'll feel pretty familiar just doing a little bit of cleanup you know we were sketching and sketching has a tendency to get a little messy at times but the underlay drawing it's still nice to see every once in a while isn't it it gives it a little bit of character and a little bit of uh, you know mm, imperfection that makes it look kind of nice you know you see the thinking process now I'm thinking here should I put a dark accent shadow right there and I'm thinking well actually maybe not I'll just indicate where some shadow side goes so there's a shadow side and a light side to each of these rocks and that's what kind of that line delineates cleaning up a little bit more so in this instance you know brush number one it's it's a great thought you know it's it's, it's working well now I'm drawing these perspective lines in the sky because remember we always need to have perspective in the sky not just flat shapes sticking on uh, you know like cards on the on the background but hopefully we can get a sensibility of you know some of that so we use brush number one now let's go into brush two and number three let's start to see and number four the soft edges and hard edges so in a painting like this where would be a lot of the hard edges you know the hard edges would mostly be the rocks and the softer edges could likely just be the sky and so those are some of the elements of contrast that these brushes allow us to do and it gives us a high sense of contrast they're very very different soft soft edge and you'll see this in just a little bit as I get the silhouette of the of the shapes of the rock against the sky you'll see the hard the hard edge there boom okay and then we're able to softly gradate the sky. So let's see how we can apply that with some of the layering here. Nice. Okay, so gradating the sky very, very soft. And so when we're able to see some of the details um, and, and maybe lower the value of the black just so that we can kind of see the line drawing show through just like this, now we get to see the contrast more immediately. All right, we get to see the hard edge being reserved for all the rocks, all the harder areas. And then the soft gradated sky, you know, gives it a really nice sensibility. Now we can flip the gradation going either way because we've seen all of these types of different backgrounds before, these different kind of skies where it's darker at the horizon line and brighter up top or even lighter at the horizon line and darker up top, like the, kind of the opposite. So this is a great way to just kind of practice both. Now let's play around with some water in the area. Let's say there's like these big puddles around. Now the puddles will oftentimes reflect what the sky is doing, right? And so the soft gradation being seen on the sky and on the water would be a great way to just, again, play with that contrast of edges, you know? And for anyone who's here and, you know, wanting to try these brushes out, uh, you know, again, check the link below. I'll have a downloadable link for some brushes, Pl mess around with them. And, you know, if you have a, a painting that you're wanting to share, like tag me in it or something. I'd love to take a look. Um, but anyway, well, that was kind of weird. weird. Sometimes when I get a little too fast with pressing shortcut keys, I tend to press a button that I don't know I pressed and it kind of puts it into a weird mode, a weird setting where it's like, I don't know what's happening. But anyways, back, back to the painting. Um, so I did one on that side and I'm just going to continue this painting over here. Let's work inside of the dark shapes. Okay. The rocks itself. So we have messed around with, you know, the soft brush, soft gradations, right? And we're seeing how that works and how that applies here. You know, even this painting here, just seeing the line drawing with the gradation, it already has a pretty decent sensibility. Okay. But now let's play with the oval brush and the painterly brush. So with those two brushes now, I am going to start painting inside of this rock selection, okay? I'm going to paint inside of it just to be able to establish a dark, medium, and light 
foreground, middle ground, background understanding. So as things get further away, they're just slightly lighter and slightly mm -hmm. lighter. Um, the whole point of this is also, again, just to practice the brushes. Uh, and why is it important to practice the brushes? Now, we remember when we were super young, when we were maybe like three, four years old, where we were learning how to grab a pencil and write the letter A. It's very challenging. But once we get that muscle memory down and we know how to write the letter A and the letter B and the letter C with pretty good efficiency, then we get into understanding words and understanding sentences and then telling stories. So at this point, we're trying to learn how these techniques work. Right? We don't want to tell stories just yet because we're not at the efficiency that we need to be with these tools. So why use a subject matter that's very easy like this? Well, it gives us a little bit of confidence to learn the tools and then therefore practice it onto other things that are a little bit harder, such as, well, for me, harder elements are like cities and you know very recognizable man-made objects where there's not this ability to sort of you know kind of find a, a organic middle zone that just kind of works you know cities are a lot more straightforward uh, buildings you know certain types of environments become a little bit more challenging as we all know and as we're experimenting with some of these values here I'm starting to see a little bit of sculpting happen you know, there's a light side and a shadow side to all of these rocks. The light side is a little bit on the top and the, the face of the rocks facing the camera uh, are a little bit darker because the sky is the sort of the backlight, right? It's the light source. So I'm just going to follow that basic, basic uh, lighting philosophy, just top lit and the front side is a little bit in shadow. And I'm also going to use the paintbrush just to add in little bits of visual complexity and detail. Visual complexity is important. Detail is important because at times we need that thing of a couple of elements that really are showcasing some strong design or strong focal points for us to look at. Now, I'm getting pretty close to this. I just turned off the line drawing. You see that here? I turned it on and off. And you can see that now the painting is almost at a point where it doesn't need the line drawing anymore. The line drawing allowed us to get the shapes of the rocks, but now we've grouped and valued all of, well, valued, we grouped and applied value to all of the foreground, middle ground, and background rocks in a way that allows us to see it in spatial distance, okay? Foreground, middle ground, background, right? Even without the line drawing here, it's still a pretty readable uh, painting and this is one of the steps that I like to teach in one of my classes about how to apply the l understanding of transitioning from drawing to painting because for me that was one of the hardest things in art school was learning how to become um, someone who knows how to translate from again drawing to painting it was always challenging for me if that's challenging for you leave a comment let let me know what other things were you know kind of challenging for you in this whole learning process or or still are challenging maybe um and we can talk about that stuff because we're all going through the same journey all the same road now let's go to the sky you know we have the soft gradation sky and we and, and that's great we can leave it there but let's say we wanted to design a little bit more stuff with clouds and atmosphere or just shapes in the sky, you know? So let's kind of go through here. Um, as an extra bonus, I wanted to add in this a cloud brush that I was just kind of using earlier. This cloud brush I use all the time for anything that has a smoky, atmospheric, or cloud-like um, characteristic, right? So like smoke plumes. A fire with a uh, smokestack coming out you know clouds in the background they all have these similar characteristics of shape and silhouette they're just kind of arranged in different ways and, and put into context in a different way but it's the same brush and that's what I like to use here it's kind of designed a little bit of sky some cloud shapes you know thinking about those uh, big open countryside moments that I remember being out in nature where just the clouds seem so big and so expansive. Maybe some rain happening in the background, you know, it was fun. Let me also add a little bit of light, you know, maybe a little bit of light hitting some of these clouds here. Also feels a little dark, you know, so again, we're going to play with the values. Something that's also really important to remember is, you know, 
in traditional painting, oftentimes we, we put down some, some paint on the canvas to see how it looks, and, and sometimes we adjust from there. And the same thing happens in Photoshop where, you know, we're not, it's not like we have to make perfect decisions all the time. You know, we can test and experiment and see what happens. Then, after we see it, if we feel happy about where the direction is going, then we can apply more of that into the painting, right? So maybe what we call it like little controlled studies or something, little controlled experiments. Anyhow, a uh, little bit of light uh, hitting some of the cloud in the background just for, again, visual complexity, visual interest. Yeah, there we go. Lighten it up just a little bit, push the value just back, get the clouds to feel a little bit more recessed, a little bit higher up in the sky. And it's funny when things get darker, they just come towards the camera real quick. And when things get lighter, they just start to push really, really far back. And that's one of the powers of uh, understanding light and atmosphere is that you can make things just move closer and further away from the camera just by adjusting values. It's pretty cool. A little bit, of, okay, now, a little bit of God rays coming through, just playing around, you know, uh, nothing super unique here, but again, just trying to apply some of the good brush strokes and that sort of thing here. Um, I'm just gonna go into a little bit of lighting um, techniques okay and one of them here is you know we can use a color dodge layer um, and we can mask it out and basically you know imagine there's a campfire right there the light is cascading up these rocks you just have to put a character there little hot spots of white to kind of make a campfire and voila we have a campfire option okay and you know maybe we can also use something else called a curve now, I like to use curves more uh, like more often than the color dodge to do some of this stuff but you know we can have some light coming down um, a cast shadow on the rock we can also light a pathway for example that allows us to see the road being lit not not so much the actual um, rock in the background so this is one way to just kind of play around with again lighting staging uh, doing different types of narrative composition where we want to tell a little bit of story you know and so anytime i have a little bit of light there you know i have a little bit of light patch hitting that rock uh, i'm going to add some detail there you know it's sort of like a a spotlight we want to look there we want to see the details so let's put something in there something of a point of interest you know some details a character uh, whatever the case might be could be pretty fun to uh to implement you know and last but not least, we can just add a couple of shadows just to really kick off the, the, the lighting direction and that sort of thing. And so that's how I like to practice these brushes. And we only use the brushes that were in the explanation chart. You know, these, these four or five basic brushes. Um, I'm also adding more, vi again, visual complexity in these controlled areas that it's not supposed to be spread around everywhere because then it becomes too much. Uh, in my opinion, I kind of like to just do it in small little areas like this to get kind of the control details that we want. Maybe a couple of birds up in the sky, spreading around the details and such. And there we go. So thanks again for joining me on this one. This uh, Thank you very much for the suggestion on brush tips. And if we can get this downloaded, please let me know in the comments what else you'd like to see. Thanks for joining me on another episode of The Process. We're going back to basics. The basics of foundation is where it's at. So catch me on the next one. I'll see you guys. Keep drawing, keep painting, and have some fun. All right, take care.